being down here and seeing you know, just the amazing innovation, the investment, the creativity that's applied from US industry as well as our partners around the world, and just being around the guys that are in the soft community, I think is a real big deal for me. So, that's Uh, you know, there's no more critical capability that you need on the battlefield, especially in the soft community, than your command, uh, your control, and your intelligence, and so and your communications, uh, obviously. And so, you know, when you think about SATCOM, what does it do in order to enable that? Well, you know, oftentimes the soft community are operating in uh, in, in accessible areas, remote areas where there's no infrastructure. SATCOM provides you ubiquitous connectivity in those areas where you're lacking infrastructure. You can be in a situation where it's a contested environment or a denied environment. And again, the SATCOM certainly that we provide has the ability to be able to navigate that and make sure that you don't lose that command and control uh, and communications uh, connected tissue while you're in operations. Um, so incredibly uh, uh, important from that perspective. And again, as the environment changes and it's more contested, more uh, denied, you need more sophisticated SATCOM solutions, and that's what we can provide. Multi-layered, multi-band um, uh, solutions where we're able to give you the resilience and the security that you need in order to know when you need that command communications uh, infrastructure, it's going to be there. And it really is in those sort of three areas of, you know, again, typically when soft uh, teams are deployed, it's in some very, very challenging areas, remote areas without infrastructure, so there just isn't communications infrastructure there from a terrestrial perspective. Or even when you do have the infrastructure there or it's available, you can be in a denied environment. So there may, may have been action taken by the adversary that is taking out that communi communications infrastructure. Or the other one, of course, is, uh, is contested environments, where again, it's there, it's transmitting, but you have bad actors that are deploying various different techniques in order to degrade your communications. So whether that's spoofing, whether that's jamming, and other techniques that are typically deployed, they're some of the real challenges that you have if you're trying to maintain communications in that type of environment. Yeah, the multi-orbit, multi-band uh, connectivity, it really does, it's a game changer in terms of what we call resilience. Re resilience meaning that when you, when you absolutely must have assured connectivity, um, we have th three different orbitologies that we can provide that connectivity through. What that means is, if you have issues uh, of denied or contested environments, um, or you have jamming, you have spoofing, whatever effect is being deployed, you can switch between the orbits and between the bands in order to deal with that particular jamming uh, or technique, whatever is being deployed, uh, in order to maintain your communications. And of course, with IntelSat, because we have all three orbitologies, you know, and that's what we bring together to provide this capability and this resilience. Yeah, look, I think it's only going to become more critical. Um, you know, everybody, uh, you just got to pick up a paper to understand the environment that we're all working in right now. We've got a lot of contested environments around the globe right now. Um, and I think, you know, the United States and our special forces community, whether it's here or in the other Five Eyes uh, uh, countries, there's only going to be more deployments. And so, you know, they're going to need that multi-orbit, multi-band capability, that resilience um, in order to support those operations. And things have moved along a hell of a lot in the past few years. So, you know, you can be in a situation where you're deployed as an individual operative. You can take a small flat panel ruggedized uh, uh, terminal with you that's only, you know, a couple of kilograms. And that terminal can provide you with LEO capability. We're not far off being able to provide LEO and GEO inside a very, very small box. And then you can have either one button or automated switching, which that's really what we're going to have in the future, where you can dynamically switch between each of the orbitologies and the bands to optimize the, the communications capability dependent upon the circumstances that you're facing. So I think it's only going to become more critical and the technology is just moving on in a, in a really uh, effective way. Um, and, you know, we're going to be here for the long haul.